Hello everybody, so let's start on the AMT Earl Hogan's Heroes Jeep. So I know this type of model, the Willys Jeep, is available in the 135 scale armor series, but I like to build it larger. So pick this up, it's an open box. Let's see what's inside. Should be simple because the Jeep is rather small and it is simple. Five tires, which is exactly what I'm looking for because I like the spare tire that the army jeeps carried. The interior tub. So the inside is inside is sealed. This one's factory sealed. This one looks like it's been opened, but it's scotch tape. There's instructions. And this is the chrome. Of course, this one has the option of building it like those um, I guess the Jeeps you see in the Philippines, what they used to do with the surplus or Willie's Jeeps left behind by the GIs when they left the Philippines. Surrey version. Dress it up. I will make it like a US Jeep because I've always wanted to build a Willie's, just larger scale. So let me cut open the bags. And I'll be back. All right, the bags have. I've unbagged the parts or the kit. Um, that bag actually wasn't open, the one with the scotch tape. They just folded the excess plastic on the side, but that one was factory sealed. So the tires, um, it comes in a pack of four, and then they threw in the extra one, which the seller put in a sandwich bag so as not to lose it. I think some kits came with four, some kits came with five, so. I made sure I bought the one that came with five. Goodyear, but it has the military all-terrain pattern. Very nice. Let's start taking a look at the parts. Don't know what those large canisters are. Looks like a radio. Maybe a stretcher or the back bed, I don't know. Like some kind of shock absorber. Transmission shifter. Seats. That looks like the rear tailgate. Instrument dash, very nice, some detail, not very deep impression, but we'll work with that. Textured seat, probably painted khaki and the Jeep will be military. That's the custom seats. I will not be using that because I want to build a military version. Some kind of fender. Side pipes, will not be doing it. Some kind of roll cage, I guess. The top roof I will not be using. Rocket tube, no, I want mine with the 50 cal or the Ma Deuce. Steely wheels, which I will be using. Steering wheel, hood. The infamous Jeep, part of their registered trademark infamous for their um front grill that a lot of people nowadays ruin it with the angry bird add-on but that's the infamous jeep trademark the radiator okay what's next the suspension this cute little shock absorbers leaf springs Inline four, fuel tank, pulleys, belts. It looks like a 
radiator hose or something. Axles. Solid axles. Huh. I guess this is the version that I want to use. This looks more like the military grill. Pickaxe, shovel, which I will probably be using. Hand holes or handrails. Ooh, this looks like a M1 carbine or carbine. It also came with a Thompson machine gun. Looks very nice. The jerry cans or the fuel cans. The chassis, which is very small compared to the, even though it's 125 scale compared to the car models, reminds me of the uh, Ford in the 1930s. That's how small the frames were. Okay, and then this is the bulk of the body or the chassis or frame, whatever you want to call it. They taped this, I don't know what this is. Hmm. Chrome pieces. Oh, the clear lens. The windscreen, the headlights, very nice. I like that little grid pattern on the headlamps. It always drives me crazy when I glue it because I can never see it. And then they always come out diagonal when it should be horizontal and vertical. The custom chrome for the taxi versions that they use in the Philippines, I guess. I will not be using the chrome. You don't want the enemy to see you. We'll go over the decals really quick. Hogan's Heroes will not be using it. I will not be using the bright colored one. Just the American Stars in the US. Will not be building the Hogan's Hero version. Okay, looks simple enough. Let's take a look at the instruction sheet. how they even included a picture of the completed model of the engine. So even though there's not that many steps, each step is a lot. So you would think this is step two and this is a separate step, but it looks like it's included. I will be building this one, not the civilian version. All right, so I'm going to decrease the parts and I'll be back. All right, so I'm, I'm about to lay some paint down. So this is the first time I pretty much assembled most of the model because everything's going to be olive drab or in this case, Italian olive green. Um, that's the best color I can find without buying Specialized. So I bought, I uh, assembled most of the body, everything that's going to be green. I can't assemble the steering wheel yet because it'll get in the way of me detailing the instrument panel, but this is going to be spray paint with primer. These seats, I did not install them because they will be in khaki color and of course these are gloss and satin colors but I'm going to um, finish it with a flat mat to dull it down so this is satin Italian olive I had to get the Krylon because they didn't have the Rosoleum at the uh, Home Depot if you look everything's mostly assembled the engine I just have to make sure I change angles and cover everything so I'm going to start spraying but most of it is assembled already because Everything's one color, basically. All right, so everything's been spray painted and detailed already. I also covered everything in matte finish, especially the decals. 
I think I kind of rushed the decals a little bit because some of the water droplets got stuck underneath. I applied the decal and I waited like an hour or two. I should have probably waited a day or two. So I sprayed matte finish over it so the decal cannot move or lift anymore. I think decals stick better on gloss or semi-gloss or satin. And flat, it just doesn't really adhere to it that well. Maybe because it's more porous, I don't know. So anyway, anyway, everything's done. Decals are on. Lights, turning lights. Jerry cans with the strap. Pretty much the whole frame and engine. Belt, exhaust, seats, the khaki colored covers, the olive back frame. Here are the rest of the wheels black washed. The M1 and the Thompson machine gun tools. Mirror that broke off. I'll have to put that on later large antenna. I'm going to load up with accessories. Alright, so I'm going to start assembling everything. It should go smoothly from here on in. It's the final stretch. That's the detailing on the instrument panel. Dry brushed it with white paint. Kind of make out the speedometer. Black shifter knobs. Couldn't quite get rid of that crack, but I think the spare tire is going to cover it anyway. Over here, the white star is not as smooth. Looks like barnacles on a ship. But this side is smooth. Okay, so start assembling everything. Still have the clear lenses and the five tires machine gun kind of dry brushed it to bring out some of the details of the mechanism okay I'll be back all right so the body is basically done with the seats and here is the rolling chassis put the wheels on it's ready to go I am just about to mate the body with the chassis and then stick the steering through the top and attach on the bottom to the steering box. Also want to show you guys my new toy. It's the Beamalux that Dylan over at NYS Modeling recommended. So far, I love it. With the built-in um, magnifying glass. And it also is really, really bright so I can actually magnify it and see what I'm doing rather than just poking in the dark with a brush and hoping that I would hit what I'm trying to paint. So, just want to show you that. My uh, new shop lamp. And I'm about to mate the body to the chassis. Alright, I'll be back. Alright guys, so here's the finished product. The Hogan's Heroes or World War II Willys Jeep. Um, according to the box, you could have built it either full military or one of these civilians taxi or shuttles I built it full military so that means you get a lot of spare parts like the decals with the flamingos on it the canopy there's also a bazooka option there's actually a stretcher too but I can't fit the stretch on the Jeep there's fenders there's chrome custom wheels so you have quite a bit of spare parts. I chose full military. I'm glad I chose the 125 scale because if it was 135 scale, I wouldn't even been able to detail some of the things like the instrument panel, the guns, and everything else. But for the most part, it's a pretty detailed model. I mean, just look at the instruction. The instrument panel, speedometer, Thompson machine gun, the 50 cal, the mod deuce, the M1 carbine. I installed the radio behind there. You 
according to the directions, I didn't have to install the back seat if I installed a 50 cal. But I guess the guy can just step on the back seat. Also, the radio was an optional. Was optional, but I decided to stick it in. So was this antenna. I wanted it in there, so it looks like a recon radio car. If I had more accessories of 125, I would put like maybe sandbags and extra um, jerry cans on it. But I could have put the stretcher across the hood. But um, anyway, it's loaded up with enough equipment already. It's one of the few models I actually built before spray painting it because most of it was olive green so I assembled everything spray painted olive green and then did minimal contrast and color like the um, medium gray exhaust pipe some of the lamps jerry can straps the seats could have been actually a little bit darker tone like maybe a medium or dark brown but I chose khaki some of these colors were actually gloss and I just sprayed the entire model in flat matte clear coat so to protect the decals. For the most part I like it. I mean it's pretty detailed for a small kit. I thought it would be easy but it actually took me a long time because I had to black wash a lot of things to get the contrast going. Um, especially when it's a solid color you don't want it to look like just a big glob of olive green. But um, I did have to glue the machine gun mounts. It's supposed to swivel, but all it does is go up and down. I had to glue the base down because I drilled a hole out, but I drilled it too big. Um, the windshield does fold downward. I'm missing that dark brown leather pouch that the gun would usually slip into. So I just glued it in. I did include the rifle next to the passenger side radio so let's see if I can do this one-handed where I can lift the hood up there's two pins on the hood one side broke because that's how tight it was I really could not get it open uh, there we go see one pin second pin came off really hard to get into um, that's the engine it's battery in gray. For the most part, everything's olive green. Didn't want to paint anything silver or too much black or gray. It's a pleasure to build. Obviously, they do have some chrome, like valve covers and things like that, but that wasn't used for the military version. It has the skid plate for the transmission. But for the most part, I, I really enjoyed this nice model. I'm glad I did it in 125 scale. Unfortunately, I probably will not be able to find a 125 scale 2.5 ton GMC truck. So, um, won't have anything to accompany this. I'll have stills at the end of this, as usual. But just a pleasure to build this. Wheels do move. I made sure I filed it and made sure that the wheels were nice and loose. And that's pretty much it. All right, guys. So I'll include stills at the end of this.